Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and, of course, Auto House on a, you know, it's lovely enough for a Monday morning. It's about 71 degrees. Uh, it's the middle of November. I think it should be a little bit cooler, but I'm going to accept it. I'm going to take what I get because it's not muggy and humid and miserable. So I've got something going there. That's fine. It's good enough. Uh, we're here in Peter's yard. I've got this old Corvette. I've got birds in the trees, but I can't see any. None are swooping down at me. I don't see any of his goats. I don't see that giant cat. Uh, you know, we're a pretty animal-free morning, which is, again, fine by me. And uh, I know it's been a while. I apologize for that. It's been, what, more than two weeks since I put a video up. Uh, the week before last, I have an excuse. I was in North Carolina procuring some cars. Love going up there to get them. They have real honest cars up there. You know, they charge a lot for them. They're pretty crafty for southern people, but they uh, they do have some very nice... I'm kidding. They do have some very nice cars. And uh, we did get a couple that are going to be coming up on video. I've got a couple of pickup trucks, old ones. I know everyone loves pickup trucks. Ha, 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 ha. But uh, I like them, so they're going to be on here. Uh, also, a 68 Buick Riviera in green, which is an epic car and right up my alley. So that's going to be fun. We'll get that up this week, hopefully, and uh, can get the ball rolling again. Oh, God. And what else? The world is collapsing, of course. You know, people in the streets fighting. I just look at them on TV and the interwebs, and I think, what a bunch of maroons. I mean, honest to God. Honest to God, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, there have been fighting in the streets since 1968, and it gets you absolutely nowhere, probably before that. Then there was that whole Civil War thing. Uh, I don't know. It just seems silly to me. Uh, none of the guys who ever ran for president in recent years deserve going out and fighting over. I couldn't imagine getting a bloodied nose over uh, one of the two guys <laughs> in the last one, but that's as political as we're going to get. Uh, the coronavirus still going strong. Uh, it's a testament to the whiskey that I haven't gotten it yet, and uh, I'm definitely full of that this morning, keeping it at bay, being very, very chipper and cheerful. Uh, and I have to, you know, it, it seems it's generational. You know, I, I'm a Gen Xer, as it turns out. You know, I fit right in the middle of that uh, uh, that time frame. And it turns out we're pretty casual. Gen Xers generally don't go out fighting in the streets. It's the boomers versus the millennials versus the sobbing Generation Z people. Uh, they're all so friggin' uptight. I mean, they really need to take it easy. Uh, you've got Generation Z running around thinking it's the end of the world. You've got the boomers. I don't know what the hell they're doing other than checking on their Roth IRAs. And uh, millennials, I don't know. I don't know what the hell they're up to with their beards and their uh, hipster stuff. It just seems like, uh, you know, uh, we Gen Xers sit there in our easy chairs looking around and wondering what the hell is going on with all these people. They just need to relax. And speaking of relaxing, what do I have? Well, I'm not going to get right into the car right away because uh, it's going to be a, an auto house video as well. So this is just a little snippet for the curious cars people at the beginning. Uh, that's basically the run of it. We've got Turkey Trot coming up, the uh, big race in Sebring, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Probably the funnest race of the season, certainly the most well attended. Uh, I've got to get a tranny. Oh, God, you can't say that. I have to get a transmission in the car before it goes. I've bought an old cheap motorhome to start saving on uh, hotel bills. It turns out the hotel there is really expensive, the one that sits on the track at Sebring, and just doesn't feel like it's worth the money. So I went out and got the cheapest old classy motorhome I could find. I bug bombed it to get rid of whatever whores are inside. And I've got to change out the mattresses because the people who owned it, God knows what they got up to in their uh, mon pa clampet or whoever. I picture the couple at the end of True Detective, that guy with the British accent making flowers on his whatever. And, uh, you know, that's just not what I need inside that thing. So uh, we will have to get some new mattresses. Uh, anyway, I'm going to cut it short now. Just, you know, thank you for hanging on. Thank you for not giving up. Videos are back. I'm going to get two or three up this week. I promise, even if my promises don't always pan out, I promise I'm going to get them up. I think I can. And uh, we'll get the ball rolling again. So uh, thank you again, as always, for everything. Really appreciate it. And uh, now we're going to get into the auto house video. 
Good morning. This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on a lovely, proper, very nice Monday, November morning where the humidity is not desperately awful. It's about 71 degrees and everything's chipper. Uh, the birds staying where they should, the goats out back, presumably. Maybe they've been killed by a predator, one can only hope. Uh, there's some chickens and roosters here, but I don't see them. And of course, Peter's enormous cat uh, may be stalking me, but he hasn't shown up yet. So uh, I'm safe to keep going forward uh, in my whiskey-induced review of this C4 Corvette. And uh, this is a 94 C4 Corvette, and I think the C4 is very, very maligned. Obviously less so. I mean, it's coming into its own now, which is great. Uh, and it really deserves it, and I'm happy to see it, because the C4 uh, is not the red-headed stepchild of the Corvette world that it's often been made out to be. In fact, when it came out in 1984, 1983 actually is an 84 model, they produced it for 17 months back then, uh, the 84 model, uh, it was an absolute sea change in the world of Corvettes. And it probably was, other than, you know, this new mid-engine sucker, was the most radical departure, clean sheet of paper redesign that Corvette had seen uh, since its induction with uh, Zora uh, Arcus Duntov, you know, being the father of the Corvette. Uh, it, you know, he had given it up in the mid-70s. A new guy took over, Bill Mitchell, I think, and uh, he went forward with this complete redesign, revamping uh, of a car that, frankly, had been running since about 1963. I mean, if you take an 82 Corvette and take all the plastic fiberglass panels off it, you basically have the same thing as you would have had in 1963. So uh, it was a very, very aged design. And this thing wiped it all away and started over. And man, I think they knocked it out of the park. If you weren't there in 1984, you cannot imagine what a big deal this car was. It just seems normal now. But back then in 84, it was a radical departure for Corvette. I mean, they maintained the basic shape. They paid terrific homage to what the car was. But underneath was all new. <clears throat> and it was incredibly hyper-technical and very advanced and very quick and very ahead of its time. Uh, they went to um, not quite the same ladder frame construction, but they also didn't go to a unibody. It was not a unibody car. It was still basically plastic panels on top of a steel and aluminum frame and magnesium and other exotic metals. Uh, but the uh, suspension pieces, you know, back in the 80s, there was, you know, qu engines were tough. The, the feds were coming down hard on engines. You couldn't just go for big horsepower anymore. Emissions were too important and too uh, strangling. So Corvette knew they would have to go for braking and handling to make the car world class. They could only come up with about 250 horse out of that first Crossfire uh, V8. Uh, so what they did was made it handle, and they made it break, and they made it a world-class car. And in fact, the C4 genuinely was the first world-class Corvette that could take on all the European stuff and do so with pride. Uh, when Car and Driver tested the first 84 Corvette, they got it to hold .90 on the skid pad, which was a huge figure. It blew away everything they had ever tested before. Uh, the Porsche 928 was in the low 80s, like .82. Uh, the 930, the same. Uh, you know, there just wasn't anything that handled like this thing when it came out, and uh, that was very, very cool stuff. Uh, Acceleration-wise, it was in the top six supercars in the world, uh, sixth place. I mean, you know, it's running with a very rarefied crowd back there, and I just don't think it gets the uh, kudos that it deserves for that. I mean, it was a huge step forward. And uh, anyway, let's just start with that. We'll get into why. <clears throat> and all while retaining its basic shape, which is pretty impressive. Forgive the mist this morning. <clears throat> the hood release is down there. Hopefully that got it. I started wiping the car off the side. It didn't release both sides. That was a mistake because I got fingerprints and crap all over it. The mist is not helping with. Uh, it had this giant clamshell hood as such. When you lift it up, 
And again, there was just nothing like this at the time. I like the way those pop-up headlights are facing you. Look at those uh, light alloy control arms that it had with the uh, shocks. And there's a big monoleaf, uh, plastic monoleaf uh, front suspension. So it had full independent suspension in a very unique style. Uh, they had 16-inch rims back then. These are now 17s uh, that were made for the car and really helped it handle. And uh, they had that crossfire fuel injection. This one now is an LT1, which was much better. Uh, but back then, even, it was still, uh, you know, very much ahead of its time. And that could be mated to a, a four-speed electronically controlled uh, manual gearbox or a very nice four-speed automatic. But, I mean, how cool is this, you know? The whole clamshell forward, the top of the wheels exposed. It's very E-type-ish. Excuse me, I think Colin Chapman would have been very proud uh, of the way this thing went up and down and just looks terrific and very, very cool. And uh, I do love the way that it highlights uh, the very advanced suspension in this car. Let's see if we can get this down without killing anyone, especially me. Neat stuff. Uh, 86 saw the return of the Corvette convertible. Hadn't had one of those since... Oh, God, I don't know, like 72 or something. So uh, that was a very big deal. And uh, then, the, uh, of course, most of them came as coupes with a removable hardtop, uh, round target top, which was either uh, clear or body colored. Uh, now, to make the chassis strengthened, they had to raise these sill panels very, very high so that the car wouldn't have all the incredible flex and body, you know, twists that it would have otherwise. And that was a little bit of a shame because this is part of what made the uh, Corvettes not accessible to the guys who could afford them. Uh, that big high sill panel there, uh, you can see it's protected by a neat little Corvette plastic thing, uh, made the car very, very rigid, but it also made it tough to get in and out of, particularly for older guys like me. I mean, it was basically a fall in, climb out kind of affair. And uh, that was, uh, you know, it's neat, it's race car-ish, but it's not what the market wants per se. Now, these convertibles have a neat feature. There's a little hidden button back here. You press that, it releases that uh, tonneau top. Up comes this stay fast material roof. Then you can put the, uh, there's a nice little shot of the back. You can see this one has perfect red carpet. God, that's mint. Uh, the Delco Bose sound system and a couple little pockets back there to put crap in. But anyway, you can put that back down, let this guy fall into place. Oh my God. <clears throat> We're going to try to get out and in here without killing ourselves. All right, slide these two levers in place. Oh, I've lost my plastic protector. Oh my god. Give this a push down. I don't know. Not getting it to click in. Doesn't matter anyway. But you can see then it has a very nice uh, fabric black roof that goes on and uh, works wonderfully. Uh, by this year, by 94, they had sunk the e-brake down a little bit more uh, to give people more space. Very kind of them. But let's get that back up again because something about a Corvette convertible. So we open those. Oh, God, get out of the car again. Holy shit. Lift up in the front. That lets us lift up in the back. I'm telling you, this would all be easier with an assistant. And then we can drop that fabric top into place. There you see the button. Uh, this also releases the uh, uh, the top, if you will, back into place. Very, very nice. And I'm going to lift these visors up again. Another thing that I loved about this car is the way it retained pop-up headlights and just made them very, very cool. Uh, the way they roll like 180 degrees. and. <laughs> That one has a little bit of a strip gear. Not bad, but it's there. You can hear it's still trying. So that's something we're going to have to address before the car sells. But I think the car just looks cool as hell with those little bug eye lights popped up. And uh, a sure ticket to my heart is pop up headlights every time. Put them back down again. Very cool stuff. 
Yeah, we got to get a gear kit on the way. And that is another reason these cars make nice collectibles, is they're fairly easy to maintain. Uh, it's just a push rod V8. Uh, in 92, it went to the LT1, which was a giant leap forward from the earlier version. I think it was the L93 or something. Uh, which had gone to Tuneport in 85, which was another leap forward, but uh, 92 brought the LT1, which gave 300 horsepower, a 5 second 0 to 60 time, uh, a top speed up in the 160s or so, and uh, really helped push the Corvette forward in terms of the power that it needed to become more world class. It already had the handling and the braking. Uh, again, the braking was almost to 930 levels. It certainly beat the 928 when it came out in 84 and uh, was considered fantastic. Uh, most of the automotive uh, trade uh, or, you know, journalist people absolutely loved the performance of the Corvette. Uh, it was a little bit heavy and a little bit underpowered, but man, was it a uh, giant step forward. At a certain point, they did away with that digital F-16 dashboard, which I love, but I guess the market likes this one more, so that matters. Uh, you can see this one is red on red, a terrific color combo for a Corvette, very vintage, very classic. Uh, you know, that's uh, one of the signature uh, colors you can get in this thing. But anyway, let's hop in and go for a spin. So in 94, you also got these little interior door pockets. These were in an earlier versions, and that's a very, very nice place to put a small 9mm. Um, yeah, you wouldn't fit a 357 revolver in there, but a little 9mm, no problem. There you see that uh, updated uh, dash that did away with the F-16 liquid crystal display fighter plane Knight Rider 2000 shit. Uh, here you have your warning light monitors, you've got your air conditioning system, you've got your in-dash CD, your Delco Bose stuff. Uh, you got a cheap little compartment here for a cup holder and an ashtray. There's your four-speed automatic. Here's your power seats. And uh, you got a center console with an actually very nice place to put your book set. Uh, they go right in there. Lovely. And, uh, of course, by 94, you had dual airbags, which uh, is a nice safety feature. So what a terrific collectible... Uh, year Corvette uh, that you could get into for not too much money. They're still undervalued and uh, really enjoy driving with the Corvette experience. Fire it up, you get that nice V8 thrill. Uh, you know, this one has a nice factory muted exhaust on it, uh, but you could very easily put on some kind of hot rod boring exhaust that's gonna shake the neighborhood if that's your thing. All the performance parts for this car are pretty cheap. Get us in drive and let's go. Nice big thick leather wrapped steering wheel, airbag, Corvette logo. This one is made in bowling green as was every C4 Corvette. Uh, there you see you have a digital speedometer digital fuel gauge, uh, just 43,000 miles on the clock of this one, but then you have a nice big analog tech and uh, all your uh, super gauges there, volts, temp, oil temp, and oil pressure are analog, so uh, much more classic. Uh, this thing also had traction control you could turn on and off. Uh, that's uh, that button there. There's your headlights, your fog lights, your mirror controls, uh, your trip uh, computer and stuff, you know, all very straightforward. I do like the way you can look out over the hood. It doesn't give you those big sharp fenders that the C3 gave you, uh, but they're still nice enough. And with the sun, the windshield sucks. So I'm gonna wait till we get to the end of the road to keep going. Okay, so we can turn off our trash control, ASR. There it is, off. Now we can do donuts in the Walmart parking lot. Okay, there's 60, comes up very, very quickly <laughs> in about five seconds. So, you know, it's all Corvette. Uh, you really can't complain about that, oh God, children. You know, everybody's least favorite thing in the world, children. I'm gonna have to come to a stop and then let people in. Can't just run through.
even if we might want to. Oh, I'm kidding. Kids have to be safe. Uh, so anyway, you know, the thing's all Corvette. It's got the horsepower, it's got the V8, it's got the acceleration, uh, thanks to the LT1. Uh, 92 and on is really when this C4 came into its own, because it got the horsepower to match its uh, braking and handling. And, uh, you know, if it was world-class before, it was more world-class after 92. Nice kick down. You still have those big swooping fenders. You've got the bulge in the hood. You know, everything that's Corvette is in front of you. And uh, it just is fantastic. A lot of fun to drive, a lot of fun to cruise. And uh, even though I'm not a big convertible fan, it really works in Corvettes. It's just so classic and, you know, part of their tradition. So uh, just a terrific, terrific car. And again, this is a 94 uh, red on red, beautiful, beautiful machine classically styled, incredible condition, has been very, very well kept, uh, just 43,000 miles on it. If you have an interest in this one, call the guys at uh, uh, Auto House, they're at 239-263-8500 or uh, on the interwebs at autohousenaples.com uh, and you'd be happy you did, this is a good one to own. If you're going to buy a C4, you might as well buy one of the better ones out there and this definitely qualifies. So. Uh, anyway, thank you for having a look. We got more fun stuff coming up. The Riviera, the pickup trucks, whatever else I can come up with. And uh, we'll do what we can to get back into the swing of things. Really appreciate it and see you soon.